Hello there, amazing year 10 student. Let's go through the answers to these questions. Um, so what I'd encourage you to do is to have um, given them a go yourself, um, and then you can just see me working through them. This is a way for you to check your answers, and then you can correct your work and hopefully learn from it. Um, and feel free to skip uh, to the different questions. I'm just gonna do them all in order, from questions one all the way through to question 10. All right, here we go. Question 1A, here we go. The very first one. I'm going to get my pen ready here. All right, so what have we got? We want to graph the solutions. So to rearrange this so we can graph it, we want to make sure that we um, first, um, let's swap the sides so that X is on the left-hand side. And when we swap the sides, we're going to need to swap the... Um, uh, inequality. Now, once we've done that, we can add three to both sides. Sorry, that's seven over there. Two th minus three plus three. It's less than or equal to seven plus three. So therefore, therefore, two x is less than or equal to ten. Uh, which now we divide both sides by two, then X is less than five. Right, now when we graph this, we show five on a number line and we label that as X. Excuse me. And um, because it's less than but not equal to, we do the open dot and we um, show that it's less than five. There's four and there's six. So the open dot means less than. It does mean no, it does not mean less than or equal to. All right, let me um, duplicate this so that we can do question one again. Uh, but we will just delete. So let's go to question B. And if I just, if I can just erase everything, there's not a way I can erase everything. I'm gonna have to do this. Sorry about that. <laughs> Right, here's question B. So question B uh, hasn't shown up nicely on mine here. It's greater than or equal to 7x plus 5. Okay, so we need to move all the x's to being on the one side. So I can see that we've got 7x here. So let's take 7x from that side and let's also take 7x from that side. So 3x minus 7x becomes minus 4x. Um, plus one is greater than or equal to five. Now we've got the plus one here, so we're going to take one from both sides. It's greater than or equal to five take one is four. Now we are going to divide by the minus four, divide by minus four, and when we divide by a negative in inequalities, we have to reverse the inequality. It's one of those uh, funny rules. So that means that it's x is less than or equal to negative one. So if you divide by a negative number, you have to change the inequality. See how the inequality has changed from greater than to less than. Now we can graph it, minus one. Now it's less than and it's less than or equal to. So we're gonna color in the dot. There we go, there's x. There's our uh, inequality. All right, here we go, next question. Solve the x and graph the solutions, all right. Let's divide both sides by minus three, divide both sides by minus three. So therefore X is less than or equal to negative 17 over three, which as a um, fraction is minus five and two thirds, All right? Remember you can on your calculator, if you have a look here, watch this. If you're not good with your fractions. You can always um, on your calculator actually just type it in as a fraction, minus 17 over three and by pressing this button here, oh, I hasn't done it. It'll actually give you an in decimal form there, which 5.66667 is minus five and two thirds. So then we just draw it, it's less than or equal to, so we do the dot minus five and two thirds and it's X. There we go. Happy days. All right, let's move on to question three. All right, so what have we got here? Uh, we need to um, 
So question A, we're going to need to first write the formula. And then we substitute in what we know. So we know that the base is 4, the height is 7, and the length is 19. So we just put all those together, which is 266 centimetres cubed. Because this question is a measurement question and it gives us units, we need to make sure we put our answer using the units. So therefore, volume is 266 centimetres cubed. Fantastic. How are you going with this? Now, the next one says find the length whose volume is 46 centimetres and if the base and height are both 4. So, you know, we're trying to solve for L in question B. We know that the base equals 4. We know that height equals 4. We know that the volume is 46. So if we start with the formula, then we substitute everything in. We know that the volume is 46. So 46 equals half times the base, which is 4, times the height, which is also 4, times the length. So therefore, 46, we times these together, equals 8 times L. Then divide both sides by 8. Therefore, L equals 5.75. So length, 5.75 centimetres. That is how you do it. All right, let's rearrange these. This first one, we want to make G the subject. What that means is we're wanting to rearrange it such that G is on the left-hand side of the equal sign and nothing else is on the left-hand side. So this first one, what we can do straight away is we can just rewrite it with the G on the left-hand side. Then we've got T plus that, so we need to first of all take T from both sides. Then we can cancel those two out. So now D over G equals R take T. Um, now, when you've got D over G, what we can do here is we can um, put this over 1, and then we can do what's called the inverse of those fractions. You can do the inverse, which is switching the fractions over. And now we just times both sides by D. That cancels out the D on that side. And that is how you do question A. All right, let's go to question B. Question B. Okay, let's um, put G on the left-hand side. Oh, we've actually got two lots of G, don't we? Sorry, I just noticed that. So what we need to do here is we need to move all the G's to that side. So we've got 7G there, so let's add 7G to that side. Let's add 7G to that side. So 8G is going to equal T. And then we can divide both sides by 8. G just equals T over 8. And lastly, question C. F equals 7G squared plus 6Y. Well, let's um, first of all take the 6Y from the right-hand side. If we take the 6Y from the right-hand side, that means that we need to take it from the left-hand side as well. And now let's divide both sides by 7. So therefore, F take 6Y over 7 is equal to G squared. So therefore, let's just switch the sides. G is going to equal the opposite of squaring something is square root. F take 6y over 7. Now we need to put plus and minus because when you're doing the inverse of a square it can be the positive or the negative. For example, 
Um, if we were trying to find what the square root of 25 is, the square root of 25 is 5, and it's also minus 5, because minus 5 times minus 5 is positive 25. So that's why we need to put the um, little plus or minus there. All right, excuse me just while I hit pause for a second, while I just tell these your 12s next door to work a bit quiet. All righty, here we go. Next uh, question. Everyone knows this formula. We need to rearrange it to make C the subject. So let's first switch the sides. So MC squared equals E because we're trying to make C the subject. Now what we do is we divide both sides by M. That cancels that out there. And now remember from the previous question, the opposite of a square root is we square root both sides. So C is equal to, but we need to do plus or minus. Plus or minus the square root of E over M. Just checking my answers I prepared earlier over here to make sure that I'm showing you the right thing. So that is how we do it there. Now we don't normally need to actually put that plus or minus on the left hand side there. So I'll just get rid of that. All right, question six. So we've got a volume formula here, volume of a cylinder formula. Interesting. And we're being um, told the volume is equal to pi times radius squared times height. The question is asking us to find the volume if the height is 39 centimetres and the radius is 15. All right, so all we need to do here is substitute into our equation. So we know that it's pi times radius squared times by the height, which is 39. And at this point, it would be good just to get your calculator out and type it in. So go pi times 15 squared times by 39. Which often comes out as that answer, but to change that into a decimal form, you hit the S to D button, which is just here. Not pressing that button there. Changes it into a decimal, 27,567.48 centimetres cubed. Excellent. That's how we do question six. All right, question seven. So we're told that B equals one, and we're told that that is also true. So now we want to find the value of this one here. Well, maybe we could, maybe we, we know what B is equal to. And to solve this, we need to know what A is equal to. So to solve what A is equal to, we could substitute this B into this equation here. So we're told that B is equal to 1. So let's, in where there's a B, let's replace that with 1. Excellent. So 2A take 4 over A is equal to 6. All right, now we can times both sides by A. And that cancels this out here. 2A take 4 equals 6A. Let's now move the 2A to the other side. So we take 2A from both sides. Minus 4 equals 4A. Now we divide by 4. So A is equal to minus 1. Interesting. So now we know that A is minus 1 and we know that B is 1. We just need to substitute that into this formula. Let's do that. Just a sec. I've just got to hit pause. And we're back on the air. So minus 1 squared plus 1 squared over minus 1 times 1. So we got that. So then you just need to type that in to your calculator. Minus one squared plus one squared. Oops, I need to actually put the fraction button first. Over minus one times by one. Notice that I made sure I used brackets on the top there. And our answer is minus two. Very nice. 
There we go. That's how we do question seven. All right, this one, the volume of a pizza. So remember, volume is equal to pi r squared times height. So if it's got a radius of z, then that would be pi times radius squared, which is z squared times by a. So pi times z squared times by a. Now, this is one of those silly maths ones where that's fully correct. And if you did that as the answer, very well done. But it's sort of also a funny maths joke, this question that's been snuck in here. Don't worry, there won't be any funny maths jokes in the test to confuse you. Go watch this. Let's say instead of writing the pi symbol, we wrote pi for pi. Instead of writing z squared, we wrote zz. And instead of writing a, we, we just write the a. So the volume equals pizza. Ah, oh, what a funny joke. There we go. There's my deadpan face. All right. Question nine is next. All right. So Harriet has got these marks on a test. She knows that she's got four marks. What must she know on her next mark to average 86%? So if we think about averages here, we know that averages means that you need to add all... If you want to know the average of what you got for five tests, you have to add all of those five tests up and then divide it by five. So what we're wanting to know is she wants to know what her next test will be. So let's let X be the next test mark. All right. And so we know to work out an average, you get all of the results and add them together. And you divide it by five because she's going to want to have five tests and she wants her average to be 86%. So we add all of them together and let X be the unknown. So when you add these together, the answer I prepared earlier is 348 over 5 equals 86. Then we times both sides by 5. 348 plus x equals 430. No, I'm not just good at my 86 times tables. It's just that I had it prepared earlier so that the video would be a bit quicker. And then we take 348 from both sides. x is equal to 82. So she must get 82%. There we go. That's how we can use some algebra to be able to work out um, her final percentage that she needs there. So if she gets an 82% on her final test, her overall grade is 86%. All the best, Harriet. I hope you go well and you get that mark that you need. Okay, here we go. This question here is a bit of a curly one, question 10. So we've got two companies. We've got Fred Wiener's Follies and we've got Ed Wiener's Extravagances. They're employing some sales staff and uh, yeah, Freddie pays her employees 15% commission on all sales while Eddie pays a weekly base salary of $200 and 10% commission. Now the question here is for what amount of sales in one week will Fred Wiener pay more than Ed Wiener? Let's let X equal um, amount of sales. Now, what we find from this first sentence is that Freddy, Fredrina pays 15% commission. Remember, 15% is 15 over 100 equals 0.15. So, Fredrina pays 0.15% times by X, which is the amount of sales. And we want to work out how much Fredrina's is greater than or equal to Edwina's. Now, Edwina pays a weekly base salary of $200 plus 10% commission. So 200 plus 0 0.10 times X. So now it's a matter of solving this equation. Remember this side is representing Fredrina's follies and this side is representing Edwina's. And so we're trying to work out for what is this greater than this. So now we would rearrange it. We take the 0 0.10 X from both sides. So 0.05x is greater than or equal to 200. 
Then we could divide both sides by 0.05. And the answer I've prepared earlier is, well, let's just do it together. 200 divided by 0.05. Here it is, it's 4,000. So X is greater than or equal to 4,000. So what does that mean? Well, it means that Fred Greener pays more sales if for sorry pays more commission if four thousand dollars sales are made. You know, put your answer in a nice little sentence. Remember, commission is, what it means is that part of the sales, she gets paid, you know, you, you get a percentage of your sales you actually get to keep. Um, so sales people get that. For example, um, like a real estate agent would get that or maybe a worker at an um, electronics store or something like that. It's to try to encourage your sales people to uh, make more money. So Fredrina pays more commission if $4,000 sales are made because X is greater than or equal to 4000 so there we go. That's the end of those questions. I hope that you've um, been able to develop a bit in your algebra and um, all the best. Make sure you reach out for any questions that you might have.